Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. This is NVIDIA's Jetson Orin Nano Super, and it's an impressive edge computer capable of running DeepSeq R1 models right on the device. It's got 1,024 CUDA cores, 32 Tensor cores, 8 gigabytes of LPDDR5, 6 ARM CPU cores, SSD expansion, and much, much more. We're going to use it today to flip the script on AI as I show you how to run it locally on your own desktop or on the Nano. And then for comparison, I'll show you the massive 671 billion parameter version running uncorked on a top-end Threadripper. You see, when it comes to AI, most of us are used to asking questions in a web browser window and then waiting for the cloud to do its thing. But what if you didn't need the cloud at all? What if you could ask the same questions and get answers from an AI running right on your desk in the privacy of your home lab or maybe even your own garage? Now that's where DeepSeek R1 comes in. It's a next-gen conversational AI that, unlike its cloud-locked cousins, can be self-hosted at home. The advantages of this are clear once you think about them. You get full control over your data, privacy isn't somebody else's problem, and you avoid the recurring subscription fees that many services charge. And perhaps best of all, it can be just plain faster, or at least more responsive. When you're not at the mercy of server latency or network outages, you've suddenly got yourself an AI assistant that's truly yours, no middleman required. And if, like me, you're working on something that has complex code that causes a large context window, you won't burn through your OpenAI subscription meter quite as quickly. Now, the specs on this little guy, as I said earlier, are pretty impressive. 1,024 CUDA cores, 16 Tensor cores, 6 CPU cores, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, what do we got in here? A 1 terabyte SSD as it's configured. But what does all this mean in practical terms? Well, it's a bit like having the brain of a workstation GPU packed into something small enough to, well, almost fit in the palm of your hand. But the kicker here is that it's specifically tuned for AI workloads. That makes it the perfect platform for DeepSeek R1, an AI model that thrives on edge hardware. So let's talk setup. To get DeepSeek R1 up and running at home, we're using a program called Olama. If you're not familiar with it, think of it like a streamlined deployment tool for large language models. You run Olama, Olama downloads and runs the models for you. Olama simplifies the process of downloading, setting up, and configuring AI models without needing to be a wizard or really even know that much about them. I know some of you probably love the command line as much as I do, especially if you grew up compiling kernels on machines that couldn't load web pages yet, but trust me when I say that Olama does make life a lot easier. You'll be up and running in minutes, not hours. And the good news is you can still use the command line to operate it if you prefer once it's running. I'll set Olama up on the Aura Nano just as you might on your own desktop PC, and we'll use it the same way. So everything we cover here works with your own desktop GPU as well. The installation is straightforward, and once it's done, we'll pull the DeepSeq R1 model down from Olama's catalog. We use the following command. Olama pull DeepSeq-R1 colon 1.5b. And yes, this step does require an internet connection, but here's the beauty of it. Once the model is then downloaded, you're done with the web. You can pull the cable. Everything after that is completely local. And why does this matter? Well, for one, privacy. When you run DeepSeq R1 locally, your queries and data never leave your machine. If you've ever hesitated to ask a sensitive question to a cloud-based AI, you're not alone. The idea that your inquiries might live on forever in some faraway server or state that represents you can be a bit unnerving. With DeepSeek R1, what you ask stays right where you ask it, on the Jetson Nano sitting on your desk. But privacy isn't the only win here. There's something satisfying about the idea of self-hosting. It's the same appeal that drew many of us into running our own web servers back in the day. I mean, I didn't need to be running Exchange Server at home for my email, but I was. And running DeepSeek R1 locally scratches that same kind of itch. It's a project that you control, and there's a sense of ownership that comes with that. Plus, you get the added benefit of knowing that your setup can run even when your internet connection doesn't. Once Olama is installed and the model is loaded, running queries is as simple as opening a terminal or connecting to its web interface. You can input your questions just like you would any other AI chatbot, and the responses come back in near real time, assuming you're not asking it to write the great American novel or do innovative fluid dynamic simulations. Now, this is also a reasoning model, so it does think for a while before it generates an answer, but the thinking is fast and starts immediately. The Jetson Nano handles most conversational queries with ease thanks to its optimized tensor cores and GPU compute capabilities. Let's consider the practical side of things. Say you're working on a coding project, maybe something in Python or C++. Now, I've managed to burn through my OpenAI monthly credits in just a few days by iterating with the AI on a complex piece of code because the longer the context window gets, the more resources it consumes. But if you're running it locally, you don't care. You just want the code it produces to work and you don't want to be billed for it as it goes about it. And what about home automation enthusiasts? 
Well, this setup can serve as the brains behind your smart home, taking voice commands, analyzing sensor data, offering suggestions, all without needing to send a single byte of your information to a cloud server. Imagine asking your AI to analyze the security footage to find a particular person, all handled locally and securely. In a previous video, you might have seen how I rigged the Aura Nano up to monitor the feed from my own driveway. It used PyTorch and YOLO to watch for and announce as new vehicles came and left. And I think that's a killer feature of the Nano. It's small, but it's not a toy. It's got the hardware to do real work, and it does it admirably well. Of course, the Jetson or Nano isn't the only hardware capable of running DeepSeek R1, but it's arguably one of the most cost-effective options for its level of performance. There's no need to invest thousands into enterprise-grade GPUs or cloud credits, because for under 250 bucks, you get a system that's powerful enough for most personal AI workloads and flexible enough to handle a variety of projects beyond just chat-based queries. And because the Jetson series is designed for edge computing, it's also well-suited for mobile or embedded use cases, meaning you could deploy it in everything from robots to custom IoT devices. But at this point, you might be wondering, what's the catch? Well, honestly, there isn't much of one. Sure, there are limitations to running AI models locally. You're constrained by the hardware, and you're not going to train a large language model on the Jetson Nano. But that's not the point here. For inference, to actually use the AI to generate answers, the Jetson Nano punches well above its weight. To prove that point, let's start with the smallest model with only 1.5 billion parameters. I'll ask it a simple science question like why no two snowflakes are apparently alike and see what it comes up with. It processes the prompt and begins thinking almost immediately in what appears to be less than one second. It then goes into its reasoning phase. Because you see, DeepSeek is not just a regular large language model, but a reasoning model. A reasoning model is a type of AI system specifically designed to go beyond surface level responses and to provide conclusions based on deeper contextual understanding and logical deductions. Unlike traditional large language models, which focus on predicting the next word or token based on patterns it finds in massive data sets, Reasoning models are engineered to evaluate facts, consider possible outcomes, and synthesize answers that demonstrate a level of structured thought. And here's where DeepSeek R1 stands apart. It's not just regurgitating patterns from its training data that it saw on the web somewhere. It's capable of understanding the relationships between concepts and applying deductive or inductive or abductive reasoning processes. Deductive reasoning works by applying general rules to specific cases, such as all humans are mortal, Socrates is a human, and therefore Socrates is mortal. Inductive reasoning generalizes based on observations. For example, I've seen many swans and they've always been white, therefore swans are likely white. Abductive reasoning deals with the best explanation given the evidence, often used in scenarios where multiple hypotheses could explain an observation. DeepSeek, as a reasoning model, handles queries by considering how multiple pieces of information relate and whether a given response fits logically within the presented context. For example, if you asked a reasoning model to explain why a system might be overheating, it wouldn't just list common causes from the training data. Instead, it would evaluate context-specific variables like airflow or component specs or recent system behavior and produce a well-thought-out diagnosis. This is a significant leap forward for self-hosted AI. A reasoning model like DeepSeek on local hardware doesn't just save bandwidth. It brings meaningful decision-making directly to your machine, making it perfect for environments where privacy, latency, or cost are critical. Whether you're analyzing system logs, making predictions, or solving complex problems, a reasoning model adds the structured thinking that large language models otherwise sometimes overlook. With the smallest model, the 1.5 billion parameter model, we saw a performance of about 32 tokens per second, which is fast enough for almost all interactive purposes that I can think of, at least once the thinking part is over. If we step up to the next larger model, which is a 7 billion parameter model, we find that it can produce reasoning at a rate of about 12 tokens per second. That's a fair bit slower than the smallest model, but it's still reasonable performance, akin to what you're going to experience in the cloud, at least for speed. I find that it's also just slightly slower than my reading speed, so I can read its line of thinking in that model at about the rate that it produces it. And it's all still local, and it's all still running on affordable hardware. We could just keep working our way up the food chain until we couldn't load one of the models, and that's precisely what I did, but I won't make you watch me load and test them all, because anything bigger than 8GB is not going to fit into memory, and that limits us to about the 7 billion parameter model size. If we want to run a larger model, then we're going to have to leave the Orin Nano behind for a moment and break out another one of NVIDIA's big party tricks, this one in the form of an RTX 6000 ADA GPU, which can still push $10,000 on the retail market with its 48 gigabytes of GDDR6, 18,176 CUDA cores, and 91 teraflops of floating point performance. 
We'll pair it with a CPU of a similar price, the AMD Threadripper 7995WX, and then throw in 512 gigabytes of RAM to make sure that it has room for even the largest of the large models. And we're going to need it, because the largest DeepSeek R1 model has 671 billion parameters. Now, thankfully, I'm on 5 gigabit fiber because it's 404 gigabytes to download, and it's still a lengthy download, though only about 20 minutes, I think I recall it being. But even once you have the model downloaded, verifying the hash will take many minutes as we'll simply loading the model each time you go to start it. After all, the model is 404 gigabytes, and if your SSD manages 4 gigabytes per second in sustained reads, that's still 100 seconds minimum to load that much data. And since it's not perfectly efficient, you're realistically looking at a couple of minutes to load the model. Once it loads, though, it works fine and has impressive reasoning skills. In fact, on the now-famous performance slide that's been making the rounds with DeepSeek, you can see that it even bests ChatGPT's O1 in some tasks and effectively equals it on the remainder. The performance, however, does leave something to be desired in terms of real-time interaction. Even with this mighty hardware that we've brought to the task, the system manages the best of only about 4 tokens per second. I also found that on Windows, Olama isn't great about taking advantage of all your CPU cores, at least if you have more than 64 of them. If you do, it's important to issue a command in the interpreter to set the maximum number of threads to match your CPU, and that way it will take advantage of all your cores. See the video description. On the Threadripper, the CPU is pegged at 100%, but with the smaller models though, more of it runs on the GPU and you'll see your GPU loads approaching 100%. And now, for one last trick. The smallest model on the fastest hardware, just so we can see how many tokens per second that it can generate. I'll ask DeepSeek to tell me a long and interesting story so that it spends some time thinking. And as it does, we see a GPU load of 100%, and this time it's in contrast to a largely idle CPU. And when running the 1.5 billion parameter model, the big RTX 6000 cranks out an impressive 233 tokens per second. If you've enjoyed today's little foray into DeepSeek on both ends of the hardware spectrum, remember I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you consider subscribing to my channel to get more like it. And if you're already subscribed, thank you. Don't forget to turn on the bell icon, leave a like on the video, and maybe click on share to send it to a friend who might also be interested. I always appreciate any organic efforts to hack the YouTube algorithm, as that other guy likes to say. And if you have any interest in matters related to the autism spectrum, please be sure to check out the sample of my book on Amazon, link in the video description. It's everything I know now about living your best life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known years ago. In the meantime, and in between time, hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime girl.